This really clever device here is made by Hook and Fishing. It's called a rod rigger. You see it lifts right out of the rod holder there, locks back in on a gimbal, and what it does, it angles our rod out pretty much flat to the water, We're probably about 20 degrees off. By getting the tip a long way from the boat, it gives us a much wider spread in our lures. This does two things. We cover more water, and there's less chance of tangles when you've got five or six lures out the back. If you don't want to put outriggers on your boat, I suggest get some rod riggers because they are simply amazing. You can pull them out and you want to do some other sort of fishing, and you never know they were there. Absolutely brilliant. Super jerk, come through and nailed it. We'll get it back out there, see if we can find it again. Just come through and nailed the Rapala. Yeah, see if we get the second hook up. We just lost one fish. This one's come through, I reckon we need to back off now. It's gonna start to run out of line. Put your gimbal belt on, mate. You're in charge. You're right. Dad's going to help you with that. That's all about just taking your time. We're just going to get all this gear in. And we just had to get a hook up there. And the fish just were everywhere. Birds working. You grab the rod, put it in there, and it's clear the deck. I'll just, just keep us going forward. Just keep that rod bent, mate. Organised chaos. You're doing really well, mate. You're doing really well. I'll get that off you. Look at that one up there. That's beautiful. But when you got five or six lines out, there's stuff everywhere. Wait, I need to put it back in. You're right, mate. You're right. You're doing well. That's a boy. You're right? Yeah. That's you doing a great job, buddy. When you got lines, things go everywhere. It's hard to clear the deck at times, but Dad did a great job then. Do you know why Dad kept driving even after you hooked one? But I know why, because um, if you keep, if you keep driving, you have Luck of you might catch another one. That's exactly right because tuna are a school fish, aren't they? You're doing a great job, mate. Just take your time. How good's this? He's just turned 10. I said he was nine nearly 10 years old. He's a gun. How you going, buddy? Good. Okay. So you've caught big tuna before. Mm -hmm. How big do you reckon this one is? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Is it pulling hard? Yep. Yeah? It hit hard, didn't it? Yep. For all the kids watching, what are your tips for, for fishing? How do you wind a big fish in? What, are the, what um, are the tricks? So you go up, yep. and then wind down. So and why do you do that? Because if you just keep winding like that, you can't wind it because the pressure on it. Yep. I can That's see really, it. I can see him. You can see him there. We can see your fish, mate. Step back a bit. Yeah, just start, keep, keep coming around this way. Whoop, watch the side of the boat. Keep coming around this way. That's the boy. Look at that southern bluefin tuna on an X-Wrap. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to grab him. Sure. Yep. Just give me the leader. Cool, 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 cool. All right. That's it. Okay, here we go. You ready? Yep. Just pick up the slack as I wind it in, okay? Yep. That's a solid fish. So Paul, how long have you been laying tuna for? Well, not long today, but I have had a good shower. Now, you know why we didn't gaff that fish? Because it would bleed too much and then... It doesn't look too pretty. So I tried to grab it by the tail. You know how big that thing was? No. It was like 20 plus kilos. I reckon we need to go get another one and we need to reassess Paul's tuna grabbing plans. What do you think? Yep. And I got some more bad news too. That was my extra, you owe me 30 bucks. When you're trolling for these southern bluefin tuna, it's really hard to pick your gear of choice because the fish could range from four kilos through to 150 kilos plus, and you just don't know when that fish is going to come along that fish of a lifetime. 
So I tend to use some light gear and some heavy gear, keep my fingers crossed. This outfit will do just about anything. It'll handle a small fish, you'll enjoy it, but also those really big fish. It's a Shimano Therese rod, six foot nine, rated 40 to 80 pound. Matched with the Saragossa 20,000 saltwater model, and it is absolutely chockers with 50 pound fins braid. That way, if we do hook a big fish, we're at 40 metres of water today, we can literally chase it down, but on the small fish, we can have a good time too. fell off. Yep, we'll keep going around. That was unbelievable. My producer was on the bow, saw Tuna go into the boat. The young bloke's just about to explain what's going on. Rod screamed off. Unfortunately, the hook came out, but I reckon we might get another one, mate. Yep. What the young bloke was trying to explain before he was rudely interrupted by that tuna is that we're using lanyards on these side rods. Because they're hanging out over the boat, it makes a bit nervous. If the fish hits them too hard, they could bounce out. So literally get the clip, Straight onto the lug on the top of the Tiagra. Now, if it happens to go overboard, we just pull it back in, and catch ourselves a fish. Well, this cool little device is called a strip teaser, and it gets that name because these strips have little fish on them, colourful little fish. When they go along in the water, it literally looks like a school of fish following the boat. You see on the top there, it's got spreader bars, so it holds out nice and neat. Goes through the water, pulses, tuna comes up, thinks, oh, there's a big school of fish. Turns around, sees your lure, bang, you got him on. Got a double hookup. That rod, did you see the way it was buckling? Yeah. I struggled to get out of the rod holder, mate. Now, when your fish comes up, would you like me to grab it for you? Because I'm pretty good at that. Uh, I'll let my dad. Oh, ha, ha, ha. talk about hurt. What's your dad do that I don't do, mate? He he probably can gaff it. You can guess it. Well, we've had a group consensus. We're going to gaff these fish if they get near the boat because I love sashimi and I cannot lie. It is just magnificent. And if I tell my boy Jed he's got blue fin sashimi for dinner, mate, he will be a very, very happy camper. I grew up fishing these waters. We're talking about Phillip Island, Pyramid Rock, people, and we're catching bluefin tuna. If I had said this five years ago, even two years ago, people would have gone, yeah, right, Paul. When I fished out here as a kid, caught mako sharks to 600 pound, big fresher sharks, blues, everything, and it's a dream. It is literally, I reckon I've got more chance of seeing a unicorn than catch a tuna in these waters, but not today. My fish is coming over this side too. I'm going to bring it around. Here we go. Oh, look at that beautiful fish. Isn't that just cool? I'll tell you what, they're not small tuna. They're giving us a bit of a run for money. Southern bluefin tuna. We've still got a second fish on there. How good is this? Here, you can have your gaff, Tommy. Just don't get any meat. That's it. <laughs> Look at the light on that thing. To think, Phillip Island, this is going to be a tourism mecca. Pretty cool, eh, mate? Yep. Your dad's getting your fish in for you. I just can't believe it. This is just too cool. This one took the vibe. The other one's eating the Rapala. I like how I give the boys a hand. Dad's taken over, because it's a bit tough filming with all these people on the boat. 
The young bloke's done all the hard work. Yeah, baby, Dad! All right. Now, Dad, come around here for a sec. I've got this fish. Look at the camera. How proud are you, boy? Yeah, extremely proud. You've worked very hard at it over the last few years. And what the hell is on the water and with absolutely nothing. And then every now and again, you're lucky enough to look up and I guess that's what it's all about. Well done, mate. Yeah, baby. Woo! Well, it's pretty good when you catch fish that are too big for you to hold, isn't it, mate? Yeah. <laughs> How awesome was that run? Mm -hmm. uh, do you always cuddle fish in the towel? Uh, no. <laughs> Now, I reckon these fish are about 18, 19 kilos. Mm. Your biggest one ever is 20? Uh, under 20. So this possibly be the biggest you've yeah. ever caught? Yes. Well yes. done, mate. I'm so excited. I mean, I grew up in Cranbourne, fished at Phillip Island as a boy. Never in my wildest dreams that I think I'd be fishing off Phillip Island catching southern bluefin tuna. The oceans are alive. They're full of tuna, they're literally everywhere. To think these are once an endangered species, they've come back so well. Such good eating, such great sport fish. You know what, buddy? What? I was so impressed with the way you angled that fish and you wouldn't let me near yours. What was going on? I don't know because you um, lost that, the um, first one. Talk about attitude. Okay, we've had a massive day on the water. What are you mates at school going to say tomorrow when you say, I was an eye fish, caught a huge bluefin tuna, blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't know, they'll probably be like, what, why didn't you get the day off again? Well, you just get that on the big jobs now. Remember the drill, when mum says, did Paul lose your tuna, you say no, he expertly released it. You got that? No, I won't check that. You, you didn't expertly release it, you just snapped the line. So hurtful, I take the kids fishing, and this is what I get back. How good is this, seriously? Tuna in Victoria, Bass Strait, Phillip Island. Get out here and do it, it is unbelievable. And you young man, you're the second best fisherman I've ever met, and guess what? What? I haven't met the first best yet. You're an absolute gun. Congratulations, you're a champion. Yes. Thank you so much, and thank you to Tackle Will Mornington for putting me in touch with this guru. He's an absolute machine, and if this is what the future of fishing is about,